So far, for continuous probability, I've defined the probability density function, which is a positive function on the interval AB, where the values in the interval are the possible measurements. The integral of the function has to be 1, because the total probability of all measurements must be 1. Then I defined the mean, which is the integral of the measurement x times the probability density function. The mean is a central tendency, something that measures what is typical of the measurement. Going forward, I can generalize this setup. Multiplying by the measurement and integrating gives the typical measurement. And instead of mu, I can write this as x between angle brackets and call this the expectation value. And that's another term that caples, captures the idea of a typical measurement. But the idea of an expectation value can apply to more than just a measurement. It can apply to anything based on the measurement. If g of x is a function of the measurement, then I can also ask for the expectation value of g of x. And this is found by integrating g of x times the distribution and integrating over the whole domain. Well, this is now general. Any function of the measurement has an expectation value, and expectation values are all calculated by multiplying by the distribution and then integrating. This is powerful general language and a powerful system. Expectation values are a key tool in the study of probability, since they can capture anything that is related to the measurement by any function. And they also reiterate the point that everything about the situation comes from the distribution via integration. In this video, I want to talk about one particular expectation value. Remember that mu is the symbol for the mean. Well, then x minus mu is the distance of a measurement from the mean. This is a measure of variance. How much does a typical measurement vary from the mean? A high variance means that measurements are widespread and can often be very far away from the average. A low variance means that measurements are mostly very close to the mean. The expectation value of x minus mu will be a way to measurement. measure this. There are a variety of ways to set up this expectation value, and the one that mathematics has settled on is called standard deviation. It is the expectation value of the square of the distance to the mean. The square is convenient because it removes the sign. It doesn't matter if the measurement is above or below the mean. This just me measures <coughs> difference. Either above or below, the square makes it all positive. Since this is an expectation value, it is calculated by multiplying the distribution by x minus the mean squared. This is labeled sigma squared, and the standard deviation is defined to be the square root of this integral, and it is labeled sigma. To repeat the point, if sigma is large, then the measurements are spread out, and if sigma is small, then the measurements are all grouped tightly around the mean. Let me calculate some standard deviations. I'll start with the exponential distribution. The mean is 1, as I calculated a couple of videos ago. That means the integral I need to calculate is x minus 1 squared multiplied by the distribution. I expand this binomial and split it up using linearity to get three integrals. I've not shown the integrals here. The first two of these are integration by parts integrals, and the last is a direct antiderivative. All of them need limits to deal with the infinite bounds on the integral since they are improper integrals. In any case, the sum of the three results works out to exactly 1 which means that sigma squared is 1, which means that sigma, the standard deviation itself, is also 1. This measures the typical distance from a measurement to the mean. The small measurements are all quite close, clustered between 0 and 1. However, there is a very long tail for the exponential distribution of large measurements out to infinity. But there are very few of these, so they affect the typical variance, but not too much, and it all balances out to a standard deviation of exactly 1. The typical measurement is 1 unit out from the mean. Here's the calculation for the uniform distribution on a to b. The mean was a plus b over 2, the halfway point of the interval. So then I need to integrate x minus a plus b over 2 squared times the distribution. I expand this binomial and get three terms, which I can split up using linearity. And again, I've not shown all of the steps of integration. This will split up into three integrals, and each integral is just a power rule integral. After a bunch of simplification, the 
value of sigma squared works out to b minus a squared over 12, and the sigma is the square root of this b minus a over 2 root 3. This is some distance out from the mean, but not all the way out to the edge of the interval. And this makes sense. The uniform distribution should have a variance away out from the mean, because the, the measurements are spread out, but that variance shouldn't be too close to the edges, because everything is sort of spread out equally out from the mean. Finally, let me return to the general Gaussian distribution with mean mu. You can already see that the second parameter is called sigma, so it will come as no surprise that this parameter sigma will be the standard deviation. However, let me show you the setup for the integral that confirms this. The mean is mu, so I need to integrate x minus mu squared times the distribution. To evaluate, evaluate this integral, I do a couple of substitutions. v for x minus mu, and then w for v over sigma times the square root of 2. These substitutions lead to this integral. And finally, this is an integration by parts integral with integration by parts as labeled here. I get the two new pieces after integration by parts. The first evaluates to zero in the limit. I need the limits, of course, to deal with the infinite bounds as this is an improper integral. And the second integral works out to the square root of pi as I have mentioned before. And in the end, everything cancels out except for sigma squared. And then I square root both sides to see that the calculation does mean that the parameter sigma is in fact the same as the standard deviation sigma, as it should be for this notation. This means that the general form of the bell curve has two parameters, mu and sigma, which are the mean and the standard deviation. Well, this means if I want a bell curve with a particular average and a particular variance, I can just set the two parameters and write down the distribution and this is the power of the general form. It lets me mold the bell curve into exactly the particular distribution that I want. All of this concludes the week on probability. To recap, everything in this week comes from the distribution via integration. The probability of a measurement in an interval is the integral over that interval. The mean is an integral of the variable times the distribution, and the variance is the integral of the square to the distance of the mean times the distribution. It all boils down to distributions and integrals.